The Seal Book. Once again, the keeper of the book has opened the ponderous door to the secret vault, wherein is kept the great sealed book, in which is recorded all the secrets and mysteries of mankind through the ages. Here are tales of every kind, tales of murder, of madness, of dark deeds, strange and terrible beyond all belief. Keeper of the book, I would know what tale we tell this time. Open the great book and let us read. Slowly, the great book opens. One by one, the keeper of the book turns the pages. And stops. Ah... The strange story of a handsome and mysterious man who, wherever he went, caused fear and grief. A tale titled, My Beloved Must Die. Beloved must die, as it is written in the pages of the sealed book. Our story begins in a large, smartly furnished apartment. Beautiful Joan Sanders sits at a desk, a pen in her hand. Her face is white and tense as she begins to write. Dear Mr. Rand, as you have long been a friend of the family, I'm writing this letter to you so that you may know why I'm going to do what I must. Believe me, there's no other way out. I know if you were here, you'd say murder's never justified, but I feel positive that in this case it is. I find it difficult to gather my thoughts so that I may write to you exactly what's happened. I I suppose it all began that afternoon two months ago when Millie returned from her vacation. Oh, Joan, I had a wonderful time. Everything was just perfect. And, Joan, I met a man. Oh, no wonder everything was perfect. Oh, Joan, just wait until you meet him. His name is Victor Duval. Oh, tell me about him. Well, uh, to begin with, he's 32 years old, a little over six feet tall, very broad-shouldered, mm-hmm. dark-complected, and has the most beautiful black eyes I've ever seen. Oh, really, Joan, he's handsome enough to be a Hollywood star. Millie, what about Frank? Have you forgotten you're engaged to him? No, but, well, perhaps we aren't really suited for each other. Oh, grew up together, and you know how Frank loves you. Yes, I know, but Frank seems so young and immature. Has Victor told you that he loves you? No, but he will in time. I feel certain of it. Well, promise me, Nellie, that until that time, you won't break off with Frank. All right, Joan. I promise. Good. Oh, my goodness. It's five o'clock already. Have you got a date? Yes, Victor's calling for me at six. We're having dinner together and then going to the theater. Oh, Joan, I was never so happy in all my life. Good evening. You must be Joan, Millie's sister. Yes. And, of course, you're Victor. Uh, Come in, won't you? Thank you. Uh, Millie isn't quite finished dressing. You'll 
Forgive me for staring, but I didn't believe anyone could be as beautiful as Millie until you opened that door. Oh, you're very kind. Oh, here are some flowers I brought for you. For me? Yes. Frankly, I want Millie's sister to like me. Hello, Victor. Millie! Millie, you're a vision of loveliness in that white gown. Here. This should go well with it. Oh, Victor. What a beautiful blue orchid. Thank you so much. Just matches the shade of your eyes. This is going to be a perfect evening. I just know it is. Isn't it, Victor? Exaggerated in her description of Victor. There was something about him that set him apart from other men. It was more than his looks, his voice. Perhaps it was his extraordinary eyes. They were very large, deep, black eyes. And when he looked at you, they seemed to exert a hidden power, an almost hypnotic power. Whatever it was that set Victor apart from other men... You sensed it the moment you saw him. Later that evening, the doorbell rang. I opened the door to find Frank there. Hello, Frank. Can I see Millie a moment, Joan? Well, she isn't here. She's gone out for the evening. Gone out? With the Val? Why, yes. So that's why she refused to see me tonight. Might have known it. What do you think of the Val? Well, I... I only saw him for a few minutes. He, he seems very nice. You women are all alike. We're all taken in by his good looks and his fine manners. But I tell you, he's not to be trusted. There's something strange about him. Strange about him? Well, what do you mean? It's hard to put into words. Wherever Duval goes, trouble seems to follow. But Duval apparently has nothing to do with it. Somehow I always have a feeling he's behind it. Oh, Frank, aren't you letting your imagination run away with you? All right, I may be wrong. But I want you to promise me one thing. That you'll, well, keep a close watch on Millie. I don't want to see anything happen to her that she'll regret. In the weeks that followed... Millie saw Victor constantly. Night after night, they went to shows, nightclubs, parties. Millie was rarely home before dawn. Almost overnight, she had changed from a sweet, unspoiled girl of 21 to a woman I no longer knew. Life to her had become Victor and the excitement and gaiety he represented. Oh, hello, Frank. Come in, won't you? Thanks, Joan. Suppose Millie's out with Duval as usual? Yes, she is. And, Frank, I'm worried. So terribly worried about her. Oh. So at last you're beginning to realize that Duval isn't just an, another man. There might be something to what I told you. Yes. Well, you have good reason to worry about Duval. What do you mean? I don't know who Duval is or where he came from. But in the short time we've known him, he's ruined several people we know and has broken up more than one home. Frank, what are you saying? You didn't know that our friend of Val is a gambler of the wildest type, did you? No. A few nights ago, he won $40,000 from Dan Richards. That ruined Richards and broke up his home. Oh, poor Dan. And his wife, Helen. Yes, and speaking of wives, did you know that Doris Anderson has filed suit for divorce? Doris Anderson? Yes, seems that one night Duval was dancing with Doris, and he said to her, what a pity you're married. Now Doris is in Reno. Oh, Frank, it, it, it just doesn't seem possible that anyone could want to do such things. Joan knows there are only a few things that Duval has caused. Everywhere he goes, he seems to create attention, bring about trouble, delights in it. I tell you, there's something unnatural about him. Frank, what can we do? I was hoping that if we just let Millie alone, she'd... We'll get over this infatuation for Deval, but she hasn't. I'm going to wait here until she returns. And we're going to have it out, once and for all. You're listening to 104.5 Chum FM's Theater of the Mind. 
In a moment, the conclusion of The Sealed Book. Used to be a little dandruff made my hair stand on end. I had to use a shampoo for my dandruff, not my hair. Now I can keep cool, because I can keep on using Finesse. Finesse has a dandruff control shampoo. And because it's Finesse, you know it's for beautiful hair. But if dandruff's around, I can shampoo with a little finesse for a little help. Or if I need a lot, let it work longer. Dandruff can be a kind of a problem. <laughs> but it's not worth losing your finesse over. Now finesse has everything under control. I mean, the first thing I need is beautiful hair. And the last thing I need is dandruff. The hours slipped by as Frank and Joan awaited the homecoming of Millie and her escort, Victor Duval. A little after 3 a.m., the door to the apartment was quietly opened, and Millie slipped in, followed by Victor. Good evening, Joan. Why, Joan, I didn't expect to find... Frank, what are you doing here at 3 o'clock in the morning? It's time you and I had a little talk, Millie. Frank, you're not going to lecture me, are you? Millie, you must listen to me. Can't you see what DeVal's doing to you? He's making you cold and cynical like himself. There's something evil about him. His eagerness to create trouble to see people unhappy. One time you would have despised him. Now you've changed. You've, you've become like him. Oh, really, Frank? You're going too far. Millie, you know I love you. I'm only saying this for your own good. I'm tired of your constantly interfering in my life. I think our engagement's a mistake. Millie, what are you saying? Millie, you don't mean that. No, I love you, woman. I can't live without you. I'm afraid you'll have to, Frank. Here. Here's your ring. We're through. All right, Millie. I know when I'm licked. If I warn you, Val will bring you nothing but heartbreak if you don't give him up. Someday he'll stand smiling at you, just the way he's smiling at me now. And you'll see him for what he really is. Morning, Joan. Anything in the morning, please? Joan, what's wrong? You're so pale. Millie, Frank was killed early this morning while driving home. Killed? Yes, The paper says he ran off the road while traveling at a fast speed. And hit a telephone pole. Oh, it's dreadful. He's so young. Joan, why are you looking at me like that? You think it was my fault that he was speeding and ran off the road, don't you? Go ahead, say it. Your fault? I don't know. Somehow I keep thinking it was Victor's fault. We were all so happy contented until he ended our lives. You haven't any right to talk about Victor like that. You know I love him. Oh, he's cast a spell over you as he has over so many others. And in the end, it can only lead to disaster for you as it has for Frank. Victor's evil, I know that now. Stop saying that, do you hear? Stop saying that. He isn't evil. And I'll never give him up. that followed Frank's death. I scarcely saw Millie. I sensed that she was avoiding me, afraid of the accusation she imagined she saw in my eyes. I knew that she was still seeing Victor every night. I began to hear stories from a dozen sources about the two of them and the life that Millie was leading. As time went by, Victor became involved in one scandal after another. And Millie with him... One night I went to his home determined to have it out of him. Victor, you and I must have a talk. But of course, Joan. What is it you wish to say to me? Victor, you mustn't see Millie anymore. Oh? May I ask why? You know very well why. Since you've entered Millie's life, there's been nothing but trouble. 
Before Millie met you, she was unspoiled and contented, ready to marry a nice boy, but you changed all that. <laughs> Perhaps, my dear, it's a change for the better. You know that isn't true. If Millie weren't in love with you, she'd never be leading the life she is. You've taken her and tried to change her into someone like yourself. Someone who's evil and corrupt. You know, you're very beautiful when you're angry. You're amused by all this, aren't you? You enjoy knowing I'm worried. Well, all right, but just remember, you'd better not see Millie again. John, you wouldn't by any chance be forbidding me to see Millie because you happen to be in love with me yourself? Me? In love with you? Yes. Does that sound so incredible? What? Many women are in love with me. You're the last man in the world I'd fall in love with. You're nothing but an egomaniac with, with an overwhelming desire to possess and to destroy. And yet, from the moment we met, you have been in love with me, haven't you? Oh, you... Oh, you fought against it, told yourself I'm a scoundrel, no. which I admit I am, and you've tried to forget me. But you can't. That isn't true. I... I've never loved you and... I never will. You have. And you still do. You dreamed of my taking you in my arms like this. No. You've hated yourself for it. Victor. Victor, let go of me. You do love me, don't you? No. No, I don't love you, do you? I, I don't... Oh, Victor. Now tell me you don't love me. Oh, darling. <laughs> Even now, a month after that night that Victor took me into his arms, I'm confused. How can a person hate Victor as I do and yet, yet love him at the same time? I know he's evil. He's ruined the lives of many people. Millie's, Frank's... Perhaps my own. Yet in spite of that, when I'm with him, it doesn't seem to matter. When he called at the apartment a few nights later, I was happy to see him. Good Victor. Evening. Good evening, John. May I come in? Yes, of course. I... Thank you. <coughs> Millie isn't home yet. I... I haven't come to see Millie, but her sister. Oh, what did you want to see me about, Victor? About us? Oh, Victor, you must forget what happened that night. Perhaps I do love you. I I don't know, but in any case, it isn't fair to Millie. Oh, please, Victor, if you care for either of us, you'll go away. Leave us alone. In your heart, you know you don't want me to go. You want me close to you as I am now. No. No, Victor. <laughs> no. Darling, you shouldn't. Forgive me. Millie. I should have made more noise when I opened the door. Oh, hello, Millie. I hope you're not angry with me, Victor, for having turned up at such an inopportune moment. Please, Millie, you, you must let me explain. There's not... nothing to explain, Joan. It isn't your fault, it's Victor's. This isn't the first time I've caught him making love to other women, but to make love to my own oh, sister behind come, my... Come, come, come now, Millie. You aren't being fair to me. You know I shouldn't hesitate to make love to Joan in front of you, would I? No, you wouldn't. Nothing matters to you, nothing. You're no good and you never will be. But, my dear Millie, I, I've always told you that, that I'm a rogue and a scoundrel. It isn't my fault if you took me seriously. I was a fool, an utter fool to fall in love with you. Yes, yes, I'm afraid you were... I only hope that you're not going to be difficult like the others were. No, Victor. You needn't worry about that. I won't come crawling to you like the others did. I've got too much pride for that. Millie! Oh, Victor. Victor, let go of me. I must go to her. No, 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 no. Stay here. She'll get over. Oh, how could you speak to her like that? Haven't you any heart? No, my dear. None at all, I'm afraid. Oh, I hate you. Do you hear me? I hate you. You only think you do, darling. But you don't. Oh, let go of me. I'm going to her. All right, Joan. Though I don't think it'll be much use. Millie. Oh. Millie. Oh, darling, what's wrong? That bottle. Oh, no. Millie, what have you done? Victor. Victor, come quickly. Yes, Joan? What is it? Millie's taking poison. Oh. Taking poison? 
You don't say. Oh, don't just stand there. We've got to do something. Uh, don't. It burns so. Oh, you're going to be all right, darling. Did oh, you get a doctor? Oh, oh. I'm afraid it's too late, Joan. I've seen this happen before. <laughs> you, you and Frank were right, Joan. He is evil. I came to realize it too late. Oh. Billy. Billy. I'm afraid you're wasting your time. She's dead. Sanders, her face white and tense, sits at her desk, writing to a family friend, explaining why she is going to do what she must. It's been a month now since Nellie died. A month in which I've suffered all the torments that she must have undergone when Frank died. At times I fear for my sanity. I know I should forget the past and live for the future, but, but I can't. For the evil of the past is with me in the present. This afternoon, Victor phoned me. It was the first I'd heard from him since that night Millie died. When I heard his voice, I... I'm ashamed to say I was thrilled. Thrilled to hear the voice of the man who's responsible for Frank's death and Millie's. In spite of everything, I know I still love him. There's only one way out. Victor Duval must not be allowed to go on running lives... I expect him here any minute now. So I must close this letter. What I'm going to do must be done. I... Victor. Hello, Joan. Victor. Come in, won't you? Thank you. You're not looking very well, Joan. Have you been ill? Yes. Ever since Millie's death. Oh, you shouldn't think about it, Joan. It's in the past. You don't feel the slightest twinge of remorse, do you? <laughs> Not the slightest, darling. Now, what about changing into an evening gown so that we can do the town? Hmm? Oh, you are heartless. Inhuman. There's no other way out. My dear, whatever are you talking about? This, Victor. <laughs> A gun. Yes, Victor. Don't be foolish, my darling. Put the gun away and get dressed. Eh? I could hardly miss you at this distance. Well, what are you waiting for? Why don't you shoot? Even knowing you're going to die doesn't frighten you, <laughs> does it? <laughs> no, my darling, no. You see, nothing in this world frightens me. Not even death. Oh, you are inhuman. That horrible smile on your face. <laughs> Stopping at me. At everyone. <laughs> you live only to hurt and to destroy, don't you? <laughs> yes. Yes, I despise you all. Every human being. 
Your righteousness, your smugness, your futile attempts to achieve happiness. There's nothing I delight in more than to send you down into defeat. Watch us suffer. Kill each other. Commit suicide. Oh, you fiend. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, you've done your last evil thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fall? <laughs> I've shot you. <laughs> uh, evidently, you missed. Well, I... I won't miss this time. <laughs> Why don't you fall? Uh, your gun seems to be empty. Oh, I, I couldn't have missed you. <laughs> I couldn't have. No. No, you, you didn't miss me. Then... Why aren't you dead? No one can kill me. No one. Joan, don't you know who I am? Who? Who are you? Look. Look into my eyes. Look deeply. Now do you know with whom you have fallen in love? You... You... You're the devil. Yes. Yes, darling. The devil himself. Oh, no. No, I... I won't be in love with you. I won't be... Oh, but you will, darling. You will. Even though you know who I am. You'll be in love with me forever. 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 <laughs> 